Hi, I'm Roger, and I'm coming to you from the Chama Canyon Wilderness here in northern New Mexico. And you're watching Multiple Sclerosis, the monster inside me, my story. Okay, welcome back. Uh, today is Thursday, November 17th. It is one week before Thanksgiving. So uh, if I don't say anything before now while I'm thinking about it, I hope everybody has a safe and great uh Thanksgiving with their family or whatever they're going to do. I just hope you guys have a great one. So I just want to say hello to everybody. Uh, it's been a while since I've had my last show, almost nine weeks. And that last show I did was out on Golden Drina Mesa, a favorite camping spot of ours, which is in the Santa Fe National Forest in northern New Mexico. Uh, they had a great trip that weekend. And then since then, a lot has gone on in these last nine weeks or so. Um, but af right after that... Um, Right after that uh, camping trip out on the Golandrina Mesa, I had an appointment with my new neurologist. And her name is Dr. Hanlein, and she's at the UNM uh, Department of Neurology, the Center for Neurology. And uh, it's basically the same office where my neurosurgeon is at. So I elected to have my neurologist there. That way, if there was ever any issues, they can compare notes and um all the information is right there for um, for them to take care of. So uh, during my visit with Dr. Hanlein, we talked about some of my issues, and it turns out I've been having seizures, um, not anything major, um, but just a little bit of you know psychedelic color in my eye on this side and a little bit of blindness, but it doesn't last too awful long. Uh, and my questions were, I wasn't sure if that's what was happening, talking to her, yes, those are seizures, so I'm back on uh, seizure meds. And uh, uh, gabapentin, which is used for many, many different things. My dad takes it for nerve pain. Um, I'm taking it for seizures, and I can't say that I've had any since I've started taking it. So um, I don't have anything bad to say about that. Um, but I was also um, prescribed my new MS medication, which is Abagio. And uh, I, I hesitated a little bit when I got it. Uh, because I was getting ready to do a five-day trip out in Texas, and I was so worried about um, uh, side effects from the meds, because I get side effects, and it, sometimes that's just hard to predict. So I elected to wait about a week and a half after it showed up. And I'll talk about the Texas trip here in a minute. Uh, so I elected to wait um, a couple weeks after that. Um, I ended up taking, started taking my Abagio and have not had any side effects yet. Uh, it seems to be working fine with me. And so I have no complaints. If anybody has anybody or anybody else out there who has anything they want to say about Abagio, positive, negatives, feel free to let me know. And I'm willing to listen. I'm all about learning about this monster of a disease that uh, SMS monsters have. Uh, so uh, right after, okay, so I didn't take my Abagio because I wanted to take a trip out to Texas and stay with my cousin and her husband, my cousin Karen and her husband, Kevin, and uh, I wanted to check a box off my bucket list, which was going to my first NASCAR race. And man, I had a great time. Uh, overall, I had a chance to spend some time with my cousin and her husband, had a chance to take a little bit of a trip out to East Texas and see my aunt and uncle, my uh, Uncle Charles and my Aunt Shirley at their lake house. What a cool ride that was and what a cool place they have. I was so fortunate to get a chance to see all that cool uh, country that I really have never seen, never been to East Texas before. And so it was it was awesome. And uh, I want to thank my cousin Karen and Kevin, if they do happen to see this. I don't know if they're avid watchers or not, but I want to thank them for showing me a good time and uh, taking care of me. Not that I needed taken care of, but they showed me around. Uh, Kevin and I went to the car race and that was uh, a 500 miler at Texas Motor Speedway. And when we got there, we got there a little bit early and I was surprised that there wasn't a huge crowd. Um, but we got there and we walked up to the front of the racetrack to go through um, concession row. I wanted to get some shirts and some mementos and, and some things, souvenirs from the track. And uh, it was really heating up. At that point, it was probably 96, 97 degrees, and I was feeling it with about 80, about 85 percent humidity. And it was those of us with MS don't deal with heat well, and it was getting to me. And uh, so Kevin and I agreed we walked back out to the car, which was about a, almost a half mile walk back out to the car, 
sat in an air-conditioned car, had a bite for lunch, and then uh, said, okay, I'm going to suck it up. I only get to come with one NASCAR race. It's my first one, and I'm going to go attend it, and I'm going to freaking enjoy it. So as we got out and started walking up the road, a cart came by and asked me if I wanted to ride, and obviously I took him up for that. So it took me all the way up to the front of the track, which saved me a half a mile, which I really appreciated in the heat. Um, my cousin's husband, or Kevin, showed up, and uh, we walked up to the front of the track, and I walked out on the main concourse and looked out, and I could see this mile-and-a-half track for the first time, and I looked at Kevin, and I says, oh, yeah, this is going to be freaking fun. And it was. I had a great time. The beginning of it was super hot. It ended up getting to 98 degrees, I think, with about 90% humidity. And so I had this rag hanging over my head that was wet with a hat on top of me, and that still wasn't enough. And luckily, where our seats were, we were on the main concourse. We had a section below us, so I didn't have to go up and down any stairs, which is awesome. And so I just got up out of my seat and just walked back a little bit so I could catch the shade from the grandstand. And for the first couple hours of the race, it was very uncomfortable for me. I was super hot, and uh, I started getting a wicked headache. And so being able to, to cool off with the towel on my head and stand in the shade, that helped a little bit. Um, as the sun started to drop lower to the west, the grandstands became more of a shade factor, which was awesome. Then we had um, some lightning issues. So they stopped the race and some clouds moved over. It cooled off and there was uh, about an hour delay in the race. And so it gave me a chance to get in the shade. I had a cold beer, which helped cool me off. And... Uh, Came back to watch the restart of the race with 120 laps, and I was feeling great at that point. Maybe it was a couple of beers I had, but I know for sure it cooled off. And so I got to see it ended at nighttime. It was dark, so I got to see the best of both worlds. Both worlds. I saw a daytime race, nighttime race, and it was just a blast. I had a great time. I could keep rambling on about the Texas race forever. That's how much fun I had. Uh, but we'll move on to um, to my next uh, topic. Uh, Let's see, uh, check that off my bucket list. And uh, it was really cool because I got to see one more uh, thing about the, the track is I was in touch with a friend of mine, Jessica, who worked with me at Eagle Ridge Middle School. Uh, and she lives in South Texas and she was going to be there for the race. She mentioned about just meeting up for a few minutes and saying hi. And during the break, I walked a half mile down the grandstands to find my friend Jessica. And I found Jessica, which was really cool to see my friend. We had a beer together, and then I walked back just in time to get ready to watch the, the remainder of the race. So I wanted to say hello to, to Jessica. It was great seeing her. That was really cool. Um, then exactly two weeks after that, I had a, I had a uh, weekend break. And then the following Friday, I went down, uh, went up to northern New Mexico, the Santa Fe National Forest, up to Golden Dream Mesa, with my friend Ruben Aguilar, and Ruben has, has been on some of my uh, camp chat videos, so Ruben is no stranger to visit my videos, and, and we've done a lot of camping together, and so he was elk hunting for that weekend, and I uh, was invited to come up. I knew I couldn't get out and do any hiking or anything like that, but I was just going to be a camp fly and do any cooking that needed to be done, which I did. I did a bunch of cooking and had a great time camping out at 9,000 feet, Santa Fe National Forest. It was beautiful. Didn't see a whole lot of elk hunters did see a lot of bear hunters, which was uh, kind of unusual because I've been walking those mountains for 38, 39 years, and uh, I've only seen one beer, or one beer, one bear during all those years. And then uh, several months ago when Matt and I were up there camping on a weekend, we saw a bear, and then Ruben and I decided to take a ride on his four-wheelers. He had some cods, so I jumped on one, he jumped on the other, took a ride just right around the turn from where camp was. There was a bear running across the road. And then uh, Matt and Ruben saw a bear later on that day, a different bear, down the road a little bit farther. And uh, as it turned out, I think the Game and Fish did a survey and realized there was a lot of bears. So we saw a lot of bear hunters. And I don't really like the way bear hunters go about their business using dogs. That seems just kind of not right to me, but they were there to, to take care of business. And, and that's what they did. It was a great weekend and I was there. Got there on Friday and left Tuesday morning. So I spent four nights in my tent. It got down to uh, low 40s at night. It was beautiful sleeping weather. It was. I had a great time. Did a lot of cooking, cooked a lot of food. And that was kind of my job while I was there is to keep it on camp and cook food. And so that was a great trip. But all while this was going on, and even dating back a while back, I've been having some discomfort down in my abdomen area. 
and uh, not sure what it is, hoping that it wasn't going to be prostate issues. Uh, my dad's buddy, who is a long time, almost a second father to me, I remember him saying that all men, eventually, depending on their age, will have prostate issues. Uh, it's not if, but when. And so I thought maybe that might be what was going on. And so uh, I managed to get an, an appointment um, with the uh, uh, neurologist, a urologist, a urologist. And so I went in and had an appointment with him, and he gave me some medication for a possible enlarged prostate, which after the tests were done, I do not have an enlarged prostate, which was great news. Um, but after being, I had to go take a CT scan and did some blood work, and the CT scan showed something growing on my bladder. And we don't know what it is. Uh, I'm going to have surgery, and that's been scheduled. They were going to they were going to schedule me for a, an in office uh, scan type of thing that they were going to do. They said cancel that. He called me up, says cancel that. We're just going to do surgery, another surgery, and uh, they're going to remove this spot off my bladder, and then uh, I guess it'll be looked at, gone to the lab, and see if it's cancerous. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it's not. I mean, after having four brain surgeries. Managed to make it through a brain tumor, which I still deal with every day. It's still there. But, man, bladder cancer, really? After all this? I'm not going to let this beat me. After all I've been through and with the MS, I am, I am not going to let this beat me. So, uh, my next, I'm going to be scheduled for surgery on the Monday before Christmas, which is uh, December 19th, I think is a date. Uh, I think it's going to be an outpatient. I don't do with that, do well with anesthesia, and I learned that with all my brain surgeries. And so um, I don't know if I'll be kept overnight or not. I would like to come home, but my daughter's really encouraging me to really try to stay overnight, and, and I get where she's coming from. But uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. And uh, so that's what's been going on. Been a lot going on in the last eight weeks, and to be honest with you, I just haven't felt well and and uh with this you know issue down in my lower abdomen it's painful at times and so i just sometimes just don't do anything and uh you know i kind of get the bare minimum done i spend a lot of time around here cooking my food in the evenings and do that but other than that i i just uh i just don't do a whole lot and uh so i uh i don't know if i really talked about it but when i had my last appointment with my neurologist um, I did have a new MRI, and I have lesions that have spread. I have lesions in all the lobes of my brain. And uh, I think there's six lesions in my brain, five in my back, and two in my neck is what it is. And so I'm dealing with the progression of MS, and that was before I started taking my Abagio. So we'll see. I have my next appointment with my neurologist, uh, the, her uh her assistant who does things when the uh, neurologist can't be around. I have an appointment with her on Tuesday. So it'll be my annual. They're going to start seeing me every three months, which is cool. And uh, I think we're going to probably just talk about the Abagio because I'm not scheduled for any lab work or any uh, CT scans or MRIs. And so I think we're just going to probably talk about my Abagio and, and what's been going on. I know they're going to want to know about uh, my upcoming surgery. And they're already aware of it. Uh, She's going to probably want to, more, want to know more of the details. Um, but uh, with that being said, I I've, I've just haven't felt well. And, you know, I'm going to try to keep doing this show as long as I can. And my theory on this, if I can just help one person um, understand that they're not alone, you know, uh, going through this crazy monster of a disease, then, uh, you know, I feel like I've success. I've succeeded. And uh, I just think that um, I'm not sure how much longer I can keep doing this because I'm just not feeling well. And uh, kind of an offside thing. This is a whole new studio set up. I got new studio lights and I'm still trying to figure out where to put my lights in a strategic way. And obviously this camera here, I can see lights on my monitor. So I'll have to figure that out. But you can see the lights right up here and there's some stuff right there. That's not supposed to be there. You can't see it on this on this one at all. There's there's maybe a little bit over here. Anyway, uh, we'll get we'll get past that. Figure that out. It's all a learning situation. I'm always up for learning new stuff, and I'm learning how to set up my new studio. My lighting was awful, so I made the investment. I got some studio lights, and so that's where we're at now. 
uh, been rambling on about a lot. Uh, I want to make a shout out to all my MS Wire friends. And uh, I want you all to stay strong. Um, man, I know this is a tough deal. And we, and we all get it. And I'd be like uh, preaching to the choir to my all, my, all my MS friends. But uh, all we can do is try to stay strong. I uh, also want to say, give a shout out to my friend Kenneth on the East Coast. Uh, my friend Amy here locally in Rio Rancho. And uh, my friend Kurt. In Albuquerque, all these three people have uh, have MS and are struggling with the monster. And I just want them to know that I'm thinking about them. I don't talk to them as much as I would like, but I would like to try to change that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my gaming brothers. And I, I belong to a board game club. Uh, we've been board gaming together for about 27 years, uh, every other week. And those guys are a huge support group for me. They're always asking if I need anything, if I need help with anything, and they're always here to, to joke with me and have a good time, and I really appreciate having those guys around. I, I, I appreciate those guys more than I could ever say. Um, I love those guys. Uh, they're great support. Uh, I think I've uh, covered it all. Of course, when I get off and I'm done here, I'll think, oh, there's something I forgot to mention. Uh, but I plan on doing another show um, before I have my surgery, probably in the beginning of December, which is not too far out, three or four weeks. We'll talk a little bit more about my appointment that I've had with my neurologist coming up here next week and uh, how things are going. But uh, until then, I want everybody to fight the good fight every minute, every moment. Every... Let me start over. Fight the good fight every minute, every minute moment, never give up. Stay strong, my friends.